one of the things a lot of people are thinking about, too, and it's hard to believe with summer just kind of starting, that a lot of parents are getting ready for their kids to go to college in the fall. Uh, actually, you know, late summer is what it is anymore. It used to be the fall. Now it's late summer. Uh, and, uh, you know, how do you pay for it? You know, we've seen some of the horror stories about it, and we've seen about stories about college forgiveness and loan forgiveness and all that. So how do you pay for it without having to mortgage your family future or mortgage your home or that kind of thing? Well, Brian Walsh is here this morning. He's a SoFi manager of uh, financial planning and student loan expert on five tips to pay for college. Good morning, Brian. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's great to have you on this morning. We have a little bit of a, it sounds like an echo chamber there with you, but we'll we'll see if we can work that out. But anyway, um, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about college. I mean, college has become one of the most expensive things that you can humanly pay for, other than maybe your house and your car. Uh, college is right there, and, and, and maybe health plans. Uh, college is right there in the top four easily, right? Yeah, that's, that's true. And I think there's some things that people can do about it and really understanding the return they're going to get on the education before they make this huge commitment so they, they maximize what they're going to get out of the, the student loans that they're ultimately going to take out. Let's talk a little bit about some of the tips that, that people can, can have right here for, for paying for college, because there are some things here that you can use, right? There are. And I think, you know, there's a combination. You know, I think, number one, it's, it's maximizing any sort of financial aid that you get, whether it be work-study programs or things like that. And then combining that with, you know, student loans to fill the gap, whether it be through the parents or the students taking out those student loans. What? Uh, how do you maximize that? That's a, it's one of those words that I hear politicians use occasionally. And I always wonder, you know, with politicians, it's always, you know, dishonest. But with regular people, maximize it. What, how do you do that? What are some of the specific things you can do on that? Yeah, I think number one is, is making sure that you fully understand the financial aid package that's available to you. Uh, I know for students, it's tempting when they see maybe they have a work-study package as a part of their financial aid to kind of skip out on that because class, extracurriculars, that's going to be hectic. But I think, you know, even if you can take advantage of a couple grand here or there uh, to reduce the amount that you need to borrow, uh, and then from there, uh, it's about minimizing your expenses. So that way you build out a budget, you figure out, and you don't have to take anything more than um, what's necessary to ultimately pay for your school before you start taking out those student loans, not hopping directly into taking out as, as many student loans as you possibly can. You know, from a parental standpoint, uh, appreciate the lo- uh, short and long-term impact of co-signing for a loan and taking out a parent student loan. Talk about that a little bit, if you would. Yeah, so I think it's really tempting, especially, you know, I'm a parent, and, you know, we always want to make sure our kids are taken care of, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you're not blowing up your own, you know, financial future yeah. by, you know, taking out student loans or paying out of pocket. Uh, so I think looking at, hey, can I co-sign student loans instead of taking out loans, you know, directly for my child? And that may seem like a small difference, but when you co-sign, essentially the responsibility is going to be on your son or daughter not on yourself to pay that back uh, as long as they're able to repay that student loan. So I think a little difference like that uh, can put you ideally in a better position. Brian, one of the things that faces us, I think, as parents when we're trying to pay for college is the temptation to borrow, to borrow extra money for, you know, different kinds of discretionary spending. And, and you know, it's tempting to take out an extra 1000 here or 1000 there to enjoy your college years. But, you know, thanks to compounding interest, uh, these you know, plungers and splurges can be more costly in the life of your loan, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think I, I made this mistake when I was in college. I think it was, I, I took out some extra money so that way I could enjoy myself a little bit. But that's really where, you know, take this as an opportunity to teach your kids uh, to, you know, manage their finances appropriately from the jump. Help them, you know, pick out some roommates, manage their expenses, and really kind of refine what they're spending. So that way they don't need to take out that extra amount and have to pay way more back down the road. And let's talk about that a little bit, because I think there are different ways you can pay the life of the loan, right? I mean, you can pay it back, but, you know, a lot of people are looking at, uh, you know, prioritize the amount you pay right now uh, with the amount that you pay over the life of the loan. Talk a little bit about that, if you would, Brian. Yeah, when it comes to private student loans, uh, you know, really there's, you know, including with SoFi, there's a handful of different options. You can start paying interest back a small amount now, or you could defer the payments until, you know, school is over with. And people default to just say, hey, I don't want to pay anything until I'm done with school. And the problem with that is then that loan balance is actually bigger because that interest compounds 
So when you start paying it back, you actually have to pay more back. So even if it's just a little bit every single month now, rather than waiting until you're done with school, that can have a pretty big impact because that interest doesn't grow on top of interest. We're talking with Brian Walsh this morning, SoFi Manager of Financial Planning and a student loan expert. So, Brian, if you were to prioritize the biggest problems right now in paying for college and the biggest things you can do right now to make sure that you can pay for college in a responsible way where you're not going to be hit with a you know zillion dollars of debt when you come out of there, Number one, what what are the biggest problems for, for going to college right now? And, of course, we have also the all the other kinds of institutions, uh, from community college to various trade schools and so forth, that are becoming very popular in this country. What are the biggest problems for going to college? Yeah, you know, I think you hit on it. There's all sorts of different options, and I think it really is important to take a step back and weigh all the pros and cons of the options you have available. You know, take a step back and think about what your major is going to be how much it's going to cost, and then ultimately, are you going to get that money back? Maybe that's a private school, maybe it's a state school, maybe it's a community college. Uh, And that's why, you know, one of the tools we offer to our members is a partnership with Edmit, where they can calculate what's the return on education to figure out if it's going to be worth it before they ultimately kind of take on that responsibility. Doing that before committing to an education uh, and that little bit of legwork can really help you make an educated and informed decision. Well, and it seems like a little bit of math, too. For example, if you're paying $200,000 for college, uh, let's say over four years, and you're going to get a $50,000 job, guess what? The math doesn't add up too much right there. So you have to be, and I think your point you made is really a good one, but you have to be realistic about about what you're doing and, and you know, what, what are the um, the available kinds of jobs when you come out. Conversely, when you look at the number one mistake uh, that that people will do when they go out, obviously that's a big one that we talk about there, but what's the number one thing that you would caution people about in paying for college? You know, of all the things that you've listed this morning, what's number one on the list? Number one on the list is, is parents sacrificing their own retirement for their kids' college. Yeah. Uh, I mean, emotionally I get it, but there's no student loans for retirement. So if you put yourself in a really, really tough position, uh, then it's, it's really going to come back to bite you a little bit. So I think it's about balancing helping your kids out with making sure that, you, you know, you have a solid financial foundation yourself. Great point, Brian. Hey, where can people look up more on this uh, as far as your organization is concerned? Yeah, so you can go to SoFi.com or better yet, you can download the SoFi app. There's all sorts of great free resources out there. and you know, different tools to make this a little bit easier as you evaluate your options. Brian, really appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much, man. All right, thank you. Have a great day. Brian Wall, SoFi Manager. SoFi.com is the place you can go to find out more about that.